Welcome to Ace Attorney. We've been trying to get into this series for like a billion years and uh, a lot of people have requested it and here we're going to do it. And with me as always is Spaghetto. Thanks for introducing me, Lars. I always yep. introduce you, so it's interesting hearing the other way around. But yes, Ace Attorney. This has been in development hell for a long time, but we're finally able to play it and I'm stoked. I am so excited. We're going to see how long it takes Spaghetto to sweat through his suit. Oh yeah, I'm, <laughs> I dressed up. I dressed up. I, I'm gonna, I'm. You know what? I will actually have an excuse to say this time, Lars, that my balls is hot when I get hot. Are you wearing a suit on your balls? Yes. All right. So we're gonna be playing episode one, the first turnabout, with this creepy asshole right here. Yeah. All of the the cases in the game for some reason are named turnabout something. Uh, although there are a lot more episodes than that, but the the allusion is to to the Japanese name of the series, which is turnabout trial. Ah, yes, that was very good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let's jump into Wait, it with our legs, Lars. Okay. okay. <laughs> Whoa! Ah, marinara sauce. Hey, you see where this came from in the, uh, the last Doki video. <laughs> That's true. Why me? I can't get caught. Not like this. I, I, I've got to find someone to pin this on. Someone like him. <gasps> Goku. I'll make it look like he did it. Oh. August 3rd, 9.47 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Boy, am I nervous! Right! <gasps> oh, <laughs> hi, Chief! Whew! I'm glad I made it on time. Well, I have to say, Phoenix, I'm impressed. Thank you. Not everyone takes on a murder trial right off the bat like this. It says a lot about you, and your client as well. Um, thanks. Actually, it's because I owe him a favor. A favor? You mean, you knew the defendant before this case? Yes. Actually, I kind of owe my current job to him. He's one of the reasons I became an attorney. Well, that's news to me. I want to help him out any way I can. I just really want to help him. I owe him that much. It's over. My life, everything, it's all over. Is that your client screaming over there? <laughs> yeah, it's him. Death, despair, oh. I'm gonna do it! I'm gonna die! It sounds like he wants to die? Um, yeah. <sighs> God. Nick! Hey! <laughs> hey there, Larry. Dude, I'm so guilty! Tell them I'm guilty! Give me the death sentence! I ain't afraid to die! What? What's wrong, Larry? Oh, it's all over. I, I finished, finished. I can't live in a world without her. I can't. Who, who took her away from me, Nick? Who did this? Oh, Nick, you gotta tell me who took my baby away. <laughs> you sound like Filthy Frank. <laughs> <laughs> hmm person responsible for your girlfriend's death. The newspapers say it was you. My name is Phoenix Wright. Here's the story. My first case is a fairly simple one. <laughs> wow, <laughs> alright, we're just going right into it. A young woman was killed in her apartment. 
The guy they arrested was the unlucky sap dating her. Larry Butts. My best friend since grade school. Our school had a saying, when something smells, it's usually the butts. What the hell, man? Stinky! Smelly! In the 23 years I've known him, it's usually been true. He has a knack for getting himself into trouble. One thing I can say, though, it's usually not his fault. He just has terrible luck. Like me! But I know better than anyone that he's a good guy at heart. Wait, Lars, don't I have really bad luck? No, you don't. You have in weird luck. You'll go from like a, like a 2 out of 10 to a 10 out of 10 on like an hourly basis. That, and I owe him one, which is why I took the case to clear his name. And that's just what I'm going to do. August 3rd, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number 2. <laughs> Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Larry Butts. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, gonna be this kind of video. The um defense is ready, Your Honor. <coughs> Mr. Wright, this is your first trial, is it not? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yes, Your Honor, I, um, I'm a little nervous. Your conduct during this trial will decide the fate of your client. Murder is a serious charge. For your client's sake, I hope you could control your nerves. Thank, <laughs> thank you, Your Honor. <laughs> Mr. Wright, given the circumstances, I think we should have a test to ascertain your readiness. Yes, Your Honor. Ah, hand shaking, eyesight fading. The test will consist of a few simple questions. Answer them clearly and concisely. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. Ah, of course. Lars, it's obviously us, right? Yeah, by the way, joke answers will get you penalized in this game. I just wanted to point that out. True. Since it's the tutorial, though, I'm going to do one joke answer. And then we'll go serious. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, the defendant is me, right? <laughs> right? Have you completely lost your mind? Focus. <laughs> it's like I got bitch slapped across the head, just like, Goosh! have you lost mm -hmm. your mind? <laughs> the defendant is the person on trial. Oh. Um. Uh, oh yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> No, <laughs> this is no laughing matter. No, e -he -he -he. <laughs> you did pass the bar, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I just put on a suit. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't hear your answer. I'll ask once more. Please state the name of the defendant in this case. The defendant? Well, that's Larry Butts, your honor. <laughs> You're correct. Just keep your wits about you, and you'll do just fine. Next question. This is a murder trial. Tell me, what's the victim's name? Ah, whew. I know this one. Glad I read the case report cover to cover so many times. It's... wait. Uh-oh. No, no way, I forgot. I'm drawing a total blank here. Phoenix, are you absolutely sure you're up to this? You don't even know the victim's name? Oh, the victim! <laughs> of course, I know the victim's name. I, um, I just forgot. Temporarily. <laughs> Bro, her face. <laughs> yeah, that's the face of, like, I shouldn't have hired this person as my junior partner. I think I feel migraine coming on. Me too. Look, the victim's name is listed in the court record. Just press tab to check it at any time, okay? Tab. Cindy. Ah, oh, her name's Cindy. Okay. Remember to check it often. Do it for me, please. I'm begging you. Anything for you, mommy. Mr. Wright, who is the victim of this case? <laughs> Cinder block. <laughs> 
Um, the victim's name is Cindy Sohn, Your Honor. Correct. Now tell me, what was the cause of death? She died because she was... Uh, hit with a blunt object. I saw that. She was struck once by a blunt object. <laughs> Correct. You've answered all my questions. I see no reason why we shouldn't proceed. You seem much more relaxed, Mr. Wright. Good for you. Thank you, Your Honor. Because I don't feel relaxed, that's for sure. Well then... First, a question for the prosecution, Mr. Payne. Yes, Your Honor? <coughs> As Mr. Wright told us, the victim was struck with a blunt object. Would you explain to the court just what the object was? The murder weapon was a statue of the thinker. It was found lying on the floor next to the victim. I see. The court accepts it into evidence. Statue. A statue in the shape of the thinker. It's rather heavy. Statue added to court record. Right. Be sure to pay attention to any evidence added during the trial. That evidence is the only ammunition you have in court. Use tab to check the court record frequently. Statue. A statue in the shape of the thinker. It's rather heavy. Take a look at the autopsy report, by the way. Oh. Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its first witness. But, objection! Before that, we're going to look at the autopsy report. Yeah, take a look. There's a couple details in there worth knowing. Time of death, 7 slash 31, 4 to 5 p.m. Cause of death, loss of blood due to blunt trauma. Okay. Now, just to give you a quick uh, hint here. Every word of every line of every piece of evidence is potentially relevant. So what do we notice here as an example? I see, I see. Um, it's telling us dates, times, cause of death, everything. Right. So if someone says, you know, something like, well, she died at 3 p.m. <gasps> or, or, or like, oh, yeah, did, was, didn't she get hit in August or something? <laughs> The prosecution calls the defendant, Mr. Butts, to the stand. Butts? Um, Chief, what do I do now? Pay attention. You don't want to miss any information that might help your client's case. You'll get your chance to respond to the prosecution later, so be ready. Let's just hope he doesn't say anything unfortunate. Oh no. Larry gets excited easily. Uh, this could be bad. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Fellas, we lost. I am. <laughs> Mr. Butts. Is it not true that the victim had recently dumped you? Hey, watch it, buddy. We were great together. We were Romeo and Juliet, Cleopatra and Mark Anthony. What the fuck? Um... Didn't they all die? I wasn't dumped. She just wasn't taking my phone calls or seeing me ever. The eye twitching really seals the deal. Yep. What is it to you anyway? Mr. Butts, what you describe is generally what we mean by dumped. In fact, she had completely abandoned you and was seeing other men. She had just returned from overseas with one of them the day before the murder. <gasps> what do you mean, one of them? Lies! All of it lies! I don't believe a word of it. Your Honor, the victim's passport. According to this, she was in Paris until the day before she died. Passport. The victim apparently arrived home from Paris 7-30. The day before the murder, passport added to the court record. Her, indeed. She appears to have returned the day before the murder. Dude, no way! The victim was a model, but did not have a large income. It appears that she had several sugar daddies. <laughs> 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 
Is this sugar? I don't like hearing you say daddies in that voice. Daddies? Stop! Oh, daddy! No, no. Okay. Oh, cut that from the video. Me with your cut, 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 oh. cut. Yes, older men who gave her money and gifts. She took their money and used it to support her lifestyle. Dude! <laughs> we can clearly see what kind of woman this Ms. Stone was. Tell me, Mr. Butts, what do you think of her now? Right. I don't think you want him to answer that question. Yeah, Larry has a way of running his mouth in all the wrong directions. Uh, should I wait and see what happens? Might be better to not get involved in this one. Well, Mr. Butts? Dude, no way! That cheating shit, Hog! <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm gonna die! I'm just gonna drop dead! Yeah, and when I meet her in the afterlife, I'm gonna get to the bottom of this! <laughs> Let's continue with the trial, shall we? I believe the accused motive is clear to everyone. Yes, quite. Oh boy, this is not looking good. Next question. You went to the victim's apartment on the day of the murder, did you not? Gulp! Well, did you or did you not? <laughs> well, maybe I did and maybe I didn't. <sighs> you went. What do I do? No, 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 I have an answer, honestly. I'll send him a signal. <laughs> Lie like a dog. Oh, um, well, see, it's like this. I don't remember. Oh, I fucked up. Oh, I messed this up. What? I shouldn't have picked that. You don't remember? Well then, we'll just have to remind you. I got a bad feeling about this. We have a witness that can prove he did go to the victim's apartment that day. <sighs> well, that simplifies the matters. Who is your witness? The man who found the victim's body. Just before making the gruesome discovery, he saw the defendant fleeing the scene of the crime. Horror! Horror in my court! Mr. Payne, the prosecution may call its witness. Yes, Your Honor. This is bad. Uh... On the day of the murder, my witness was selling newspapers at the victim's building. Please bring Mr. Frank Sawit to the stand. Uh. Mr. Sawit, you sell newspaper subscriptions. Is this correct? Oh, oh yes, newspapers, <laughs> yes. Mr. Sawit, you may proceed with your testimony. Please tell the court what you saw on the day of the murder. I already am going to tell the judge's voice is going to kill me in this series. Witness testimony. Witnesses account. I was going door to door selling subscriptions when I saw a man fleeing the apartment. I thought he must be in a hurry because he left the door half open behind him. Thinking it's strange, I looked inside the apartment. Then I saw her, lying there, a woman, not moving, dead. I quailed uh, in fright and found myself unable to go inside. I thought to call the police immediately. 
However, the phone in her apartment wasn't working. I went to a nearby park and found a public phone. Ah, I remember the time exactly. It was 1 p.m. Hmm. The man who ran was, without a doubt, the defendant sitting right over there. <coughs> My voice. Hmm. Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? Uh, I mean, that's kind of our fault, Phoenix. My bad. Yeah. Fly like a dog. <laughs> Larry, why didn't you tell the truth? <laughs> why like a dog? I can't defend you against a testimony like that. Incidentally, why wasn't the phone in the victim's apartment working? Hurry, <laughs> Your Honor, at the time of the murder, there was a blackout in the building. Aren't phones supposed to work during a blackout? Yes, Your Honor. However, some cordless phones do not function normally. The phone that Mr. Sawit used was one of those. Your Honor? I have a record of the blackout for your perusal. Blackout record. Electricity to Mrs. Stone's building was out from noon to 6 p.m. on the day of the crime. No! Mm. Mr. Wright! <laughs> yes, uh, yes, your honor. You may begin your cross-examination. Cr uh, cr cr cross-examination, your honor. All right, right, this is it, the real deal. Uh, what exactly am I supposed to do? Why, you expose the lies in the testimony the witness just gave. Lies? What? He was lying? Your client is innocent, right? Then that witness must have lied in his testimony. Or is your client really... Guilty? <gasps> Ugh. How do I prove he's not? You hold the key. It's in the evidence. Compare the witness's testimony to the evidence at hand. There's bound to be a contradiction in there. First, find contradictions between the court record and the witness's testimony. Then... Once you found the contradicting evidence, present it and rub it into the witness's face. Um, okay. Open the court record with tab and then point out the contradictions in the testimony. All right, boobs, McGee. You're going to regret saying that in a couple cases. <laughs> Cross examination. Witnesses account. Ooh. Ooh. No, 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 you don't. You, you're gonna be going through these the, the, this this testimony a lot, so don't 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 bother voicing it every time. I was going down to that. So yeah, he said that she was dead at 1 p.m., but the the autopsy report says she was like time of death 4 to 5 p.m. Makes no yeah, sense. It's a very clear contradiction. Yeah. Oh yeah, so I can present the autopsy. Objection. Objection! Nope. This evidence clearly reveals the contradiction in that statement, your honor! <sighs> How exactly are the evidence in the statement just now related? They aren't, are they? <clears throat> Not at all. Mr. Wright, please take the facts over for making accusations. Fuck! Oh, I don't think that won me any points with the judge. All right, so think that through a little bit more and pre actually present it cor correctly this time. I, I didn't realize you have to, like, put it on the exact line. Yes. Ugh. All right, right here. So he says she died at 1 p.m. So if I take the evidence, uh, the autopsy report, and then present that, it should work. Objection! And you know, you know how you can tell? Because the music stops when you object the right statement. Oh, okay. You found the body at 1 p.m. You're sure? <laughs> yes! It was 1 p.m. for certain. <laughs> Notice his head doesn't move. Frankly, I find that hard to believe. Yeah, it's really creepy. I don't like it. 
Your statement directly contradicts the autopsy report. The autopsy notes the time of death at some time after 4 p.m. There was nobody to, uh, no body to find at 1 p.m. How do you explain this three hour gap? <coughs> oh, that. <coughs> Objection! <laughs> this is trivial. The witness merely forgot the time. How do you forget the time of death? <laughs> After his testimony, I find that hard to believe. Mr. Sarit, why are you so certain you found the body at 1 p.m.? I, uh, well, I, <laughs> that's a really good question. Great job, right? Way to put him on the spot. That's all you have to do. Point out contradictions. Lies always beget more lies. See through one, and their whole story falls apart. <gasps> Thank you, boobs. Wait! You're, you're really gonna regret that I soon. I remember now! <clears throat> Would you care to give your testimony again? Witness testimony. The time of discovery. His head's just still. I don't like it. What? How is he moving like that? Is he like a chicken where you like rotate their body and their heads don't move? Yeah, he's a chicken. He's a chicken. You see, when I found the body, I heard the time. There was a voice saying the time. It was probably coming from the television. Ah. Uh. Oh. <laughs> but it was three hours off, wasn't it? I guess the victim must have been watching a video of a taped program. That's why I thought it was 1 p.m. Terribly sorry about the misunderstanding. All right, that one's also very obvious. <sighs> I see. You heard a voice saying the time on the taped program. <clears throat> Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Right. Yes. You know what to do. Right. I've got this one. How the fuck does that make sense? The power was out. Hmm. Notice anything suspicious? Yes. Your boobs. You're just really gonna regret saying that soon. This is the contradiction here, because you can't hear the television if there the power is out! <laughs> OBJECTION! Hold it right there! I got it. Haha. <laughs> the prosecution has said there was a blackout at the time of the discovery. And this record proves it! You couldn't have heard the television or a video. Ah! I will. <clears throat> the defense has a point. <clears throat> Do you have an explanation for this, Mr. Stomach? No, I, I find it quite puzzling myself. Quite. <clears throat> ah! Wait, I remember now. Mr. Sowett, the courts would prefer to hear an accurate testimony from the very beginning. These constant corrections are harming your credibility. That, and you seem rather... distraught. Ah! <laughs> My apologies, your honor. It uh, must have been the shock of finding the body, of course. <sighs> Very well, Mr. Sawit. Let's hear your testimony once more, please. Witness testimony. Hearing the time. Shit, shit. Actually, I didn't hear the time. I saw it. 
There was a table clock in the apartment, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the murder weapon. The killer used it to hit the victim. Hmm. That must have been what I saw. Hmm. The murder weapon was a clock? You saw a clock. I guess that would explain it. Hmm. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Gladly, Your Honor. Hearing the time. Hearing the time. Got it. Okay, so it's a statue, not a clock. So that's what we present then. At least as far as we know. Got it. Okay. OBJECTION! OBJECTION! Wait just a moment. The murder weapon wasn't a clock. It was a statue. Now, how is this supposed to be a clock? Well, you with your objections and your evidence. Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Mr. Sawit. Hey, I I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Payne. River. As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it, and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. <sighs> I see. So the murder weapon was a table clock, after all. Well, Mr. Wright... It appears that the witness's testimony was correct. This is a clock. Do you have any problems with this testimony now? So, you weren't wrong to point that out, and that is how you progress, but... Now what's left? Did you have any issues with it? I don't think so, no. Okay, it doesn't- it's not a death sentence to say no. Uh, I guess not. There is a clock on the scene, so no problem. Right? Right? Are you out of your mind? That clock doesn't look like a clock at all. The witness couldn't have possibly known it was a clock just by seeing it. Shit. Good point. He said himself, he never entered the apartment. <gasps> it was in his testimony. Hey! Haha! <laughs> You're right! Thanks, boobs. Is something the matter? Does the defense have anything to add? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. The only way he could have known the weapon was a clock is to hold it in his hand. Yet the witness testified that he never entered the apartment. <laughs> Clearly, a contradiction! Hmm. <laughs> Indeed. The witness knew it was a clock because he... You're lying! You were inside the apartment on the day of the murder. Ah! <laughs> Oh yeah, well, prove it! Prove I went in there! I'll do better than that! I could prove you were the one who killed her! You struck her with the clock, and the shock of the blow triggered the clock's voice. That was the sound you heard! Whoa, holy shit. Yeah, it's, it's Dragon Ball Z at this point. <laughs> yeah. Order in the court! Order in the court! Intriguing! Please continue, Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. <gasps> Mr. Sawit, the sound must have left quite an impression on you. Understandable, since the murder weapon spoke just as you hit the victim. That voice was burned into your mind. That's why you were so certain about the time. Objection! Wh what's the meaning of this? Exactly what I just said, you dumb shit. This is all baseless conjecture! Baseless? Uh, I'm pretty based. Just look at the witness's face! <laughs> what was that noise? <laughs> That's what it said! <laughs> <clears throat> Would the witness care to elaborate? Did you strike the victim with the clock? I, I. That day, that day, I, I never... Look, 
I the clock. I don't know. I mean, I saw. <laughs> Shut up, shut up, shut up! I oh, hate you! It was him! I tell you, I saw him! He, he killed her! And he should burn! Burn! Give him death! Hoarder! Hoarder in the court, I say! Oh my gosh, okay. <laughs> you gave it your all there, just holy shit, dude. Your Honor, a moment, please. There isn't a shred of evidence supporting the defense's claims. <clears throat> Mr. Wright. Your Honor? You claim the sound the witness heard came from a cock. Do you have any evidence? The whole case is riding on this. I'd better think it through carefully. Your Honor. The sound Mr. Sawit heard was definitely this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply... All right, mm. so which one do you think it is? Ask the neighbors? Probably not, right? No, no. It's either sounding the clock or the clock's batteries, but I'm trying to think. Mm-hmm. So if the clock still works, you probably don't need to check the batteries. That's true. Oh, yeah. If he heard it, then it has batteries, so it's sound the clock. Yeah. Let's sound the clock now here in this court. Your Honor, may I have the clock? I asked the court to listen very carefully. Beep. I think it's 825. That certainly is a strange way to announce the time. Well, he is the thinker after all. So, we've heard the clock. What are your conclusions, Mr. Wright? Mr. Payne, can you tell me what time it is now? It's 11.25. Ah! <laughs> As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sawit heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sawit... <laughs> Try to talk your way out of this one. <sighs> you forgot one thing. Oh no. What's he talking about now? Well, it may seem like that this clock is running three hours slow. It proves nothing! How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, you don't have a case. Ah. Ah, he's right. How am I going to prove that? Damn it. I was so close. By the way, did you notice something here? What's Which up? is that, you know, like the ellipses and the dot dot dots? You notice mm -hmm. how they're like accompanied by little like sound effects and little like facial expressions. Hey, Dan Salavato, that's how you do it. <laughs> that's how you actually use those little effects. Mr. Wright, it seems you lack the critical evidence to support your claim. <clears throat> yes, your honor. This means I cannot let you indict the witness. Unfortunately! This ends the cross-examination of Mr. Frank Sawit. <laughs> I come all the way down here to testify, and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. A criminal. You lawyers are all slime. <laughs> I almost had him. Sorry, Larry. I failed you. There's nothing I can do about it now. Not so fast, Mr. Sawit. Oh my gosh! Hype! Mia! I mean, Chief! Listen up, right? Don't throw this one away. Not like this. Think! Okay. But, Chief! It's over! 
I can't prove the clock was slow the day of the murder. Nobody can prove that. Not even me. Uh, well, yes. But that doesn't mean you can't still win. Try thinking out of the box. Don't waste time doubting the facts. Assume the clock was three hours slow and... Think through it. Ask yourself, why was the clock three hours slow? Got it. Why are your boobs so big? Figure out the reason and you'll have your proof. Okay. Right? Right? <laughs> God. They had to do it once. Yep. Can you think of a reason as to why the clock would be three hours slow? Yes! Wait! Maybe I can prove it! You must have evidence somewhere that can prove it, right? Find it and let them have it. Well, Mr. Wright, you say the clock was already running slow on the day of the murder. Have you found the evidence to support this claim? <clears throat> of course, Your Honor. There is a piece of evidence in the court record that can prove my claim beyond a doubt. Ha! Tough words. Let's see you pull this one off. Let's see the evidence that proves why the clock was running slow. <clears throat> All right, this is an important part. So let's let's think about this for a bit. Well, she was in Paris and there's a different time zone. Right, but it's not a three hour difference. It could be a 21 hour difference. Oh shit, you're right. Take that! The victim had just returned home from abroad the day before the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is nine hours. When it's 4 p.m. here, it's 1 a.m. the next day there. The clock wasn't three hours slow, it was nine hours fast! The victim hadn't reset her clock since returning home. That's why the time you heard when you struck her dead in her apartment was wrong! Ha <laughs> ha Proof enough for you, Mr. Saw it! Or did I say, Mr. Did it! By the way, by 21 I meant 9. Sorry, brain fart. Order! Order, I say! <clears throat> well, this case has certainly turned out differently than we all expected. Mr. Payne, your witness. He, uh, he was arrested and has been taken away, Your Honor. <clears throat> Very well. Mr. Wright! Haha, <laughs> yes, Your Honor. I have to say, I'm impressed. I don't think I've ever seen someone complete an offense so quickly and find the true culprit at the same time. Thank you, Your Honor. At this point, this is only a formality, but this court finds the defendant, Mr. Larry Butts, <clears throat> not guilty. Yeah! Bye -bye! <laughs> <sighs> and with that, this court is adjourned. Ah, <sighs> oh, thank God. It turns out that Frank Sawit was a common burglar. He posed as a newspaper salesman to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, when Larry went to her apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sawit let himself in to do his dirty work. Ah! It's a turtle! While he was screaming. <laughs> While he was screaming. <laughs> ah, it's a turtle! <laughs> While he was searching her place, the victim returned. Flustered, Mr. Sawit grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. Blonk. Horny jail. <laughs> August 3rd, 2.32 p.m. District Court. Defendant lobby number two. <sighs> I still can't believe we won! Right! Good job in there! Congratulations! <laughs> Thanks, Chief! I owe it all to you! Not at all, not at all. You fought your own battles in there. It's been a while since I've seen a trial end on such a satisfying note. I've never seen the Chief looking 
is happy. <laughs> She's this glad. Imagine how Larry must feel. My life is over! Larry, you're supposed to be happy! What's wrong? No! Oh, Nick! Don't worry about me! I'll be dead and gone soon! Good! Wait! No! I mean, bad! Bad, bad, bad! Bad it! Stop it! Larry, you're innocent! The case is closed! No! Oh. But, but my Cindy Wendy's gone, man! <laughs> gone forever! <sighs> Larry... She was, uh... Nah... Never mind. Congratulations, Harry! Ha Harry! Is in butts? Harry butts? <sighs> yes, you! Yes, you! I can practically see the headlines now. Harry Butts. Innocent. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks. I really owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Let's celebrate dinner, movie, my treat. Uh, no, I couldn't. <sighs> hey. I was the one who got you off the hook! Oh, hey! Here, take this! It's a present! A present? For me? Wait, wasn't this the evidence that... Hey, actually, I made this clock for her! I made one for her and one for me! Uh, really? You? You made this? Um, well, thank you. I'll keep it as a memento. Yo, Nick. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Can you believe it? I was so into that chick. And, and she was just playing me for a fool. Don't that make you just want to cry? <laughs> uh, Larry. Uh, are you so sure? Squeeze me? <laughs> I think she thought quite a lot of you in her own way. Nah, you don't gotta sympathize with me. It's okay. Oh, I'm not just sympathizing, really. Isn't that right? Right? Don't you have something to show your friend? Something that proves how she felt about him? Yes. Huh? Oh, yeah, right. Oh, what the heck is she talking about? All well, right, she, so... She, she kept his statue. Yeah. Brought it Take with her to Check this out, Larry. Proof positive you weren't just some chump to her. Huh? What about that clock? This is the clock you made her, Larry. And she took it with her when she traveled. Whatever. She probably just needed a clock, that's all. You think so? It's a pretty heavy clock to take traveling. Well, make of it what you will. Hey, Nick. I'm glad I asked you to be my lawyer. Really, I am. Thanks. <sighs> Hope that made him feel a little bit better. Right? I hope you see the importance of evidence now. Also, hopefully you realize things change depending on how you look at them. People too. We never really know if our clients are guilty or innocent. All we can do is believe in them. And in order to believe in them, you have to believe in yourself. Right? Listen. Learn. Grow strong. Never let go of what you believe in. Never. 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 I gently open the door. Well, I think our work here is done. Shall we be off? Yeah, I guess so. Say, how about dinner on me? Don't say it. 
All right, baby girl. We'll drink a toast to innocent butts. <laughs> yeah! Oh, speaking of Harry, you were saying part of why you became a lawyer was because of him. Uh, yeah, part at least. You'll have to tell me more about it sometime. Maybe over drinks? Oh, shit. And so, my first trial came to a close. Larry slapped me on the back and said, Gee, Nick, it's good to have friends! But I'm pretty sure... <laughs> but I'm pretty sure he's not going to pay us, unless you count the clock he gave Neo. <sighs> I didn't know it then, but that clock was soon going to be at the center of another incident. Huh? And my promise to tell the chief about me and Larry would be one promise that I wouldn't be able to keep. Huh? The end! We beat all of Ace Attorney Lars. Yeah, the first case. Good job. All right, yeah, I'm taking a break, guys. This was a lot of fun. I cannot, I cannot take any more right now. Very good game. Super fun. I am sweating my ass off. Yeah, but guys, Tristan in a suit, right? You never get to see him dressed up. There you go. All right. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. If you like this, make sure to go check out our DDLC series. It's very, very fun as well, full of silly voices and narrations. And check out our podcast in the description below. Thank you for joining me, Lars. This was a lot of fun. Yeah, and I noticed that like your voice for Phoenix was basically just male Monica. Yep. Interesting. Smell you later.